Gentlemen of the jury, an assault and battery may be defined as any unlawful use of force or violence on the person of another or the wrongful violence or constraint inflicted on a human being without his consent. The intent to injure is not an essential element of assault and battery. If the act causing the injury is unlawful, the deliberate hitting or striking of a person is an unlawful act unless made in self-defense. If the injury caused is wrongful, then the intent must necessarily be wrongful. Every person is presumed to intend the consequences which follow the commission of an unlawful act. The burden of proof in this case rests upon the plaintiff to prove by the greater weight of the evidence that the defendant committed an assault and battery upon the plaintiff by hitting him in the face or on the head. And if you find that the defendant did so hit the plaintiff, then the plaintiff is entitled to recover from the defendant the damages which he has actually sustained by reason of such assault and battery. The defendant claims that the plaintiff assaulted the defendant and used abusive and insulting language which provoked the acts on the part of the defendant. It is the law in the state that mere words or acts not amounting to an assault, however gross and abusive or insulting such language is, and even though spoken or performed for the purpose of provoking an assault, are no defense to a civil action for assault and battery. If you find from the evidence in this case that the plaintiff is entitled to recover damages from the defendant, there is one other element of damages in a case of this kind which you have a right to consider. It is claimed by the plaintiff that this assault was willfully and maliciously made. If you find from the evidence that the assault was in fact willfully and maliciously made, then you may find a further sum of damages in favor of the plaintiff, which the law calls exemplary or punitive damages. The jury is not required to find exemplary or punitive damages in any case, but they may in their discretion do so if they find that the assault was maliciously made. An injury is regarded as malicious when it is done with malice in the mind of the person who does it, with ill will and wrongful feelings toward that person, that is, an intent or purpose to do that person an injury. By exemplary damages is meant damages which are intended to serve as an example to others and to deter and prevent others from committing similar acts. Such damages are also called punitive damages because they serve as a punishment to the party who committed the assault and battery. As stated before, the burden of proof rests upon the plaintiff to prove by the greater weight of the evidence that the defendant did wrongfully assault and beat the plaintiff as claimed by the plaintiff. If you find from the evidence by the greater weight thereof that the defendant did so assault and strike the plaintiff, then you will find a verdict in favor of the plaintiff for such amount as will fully and fairly compensate him for the injuries directly flowing from the alleged assault and for all damages proximately caused by defendant's wrongful acts that is, all consequences of the injury, future as well as past, including mental suffering, indignity, disgrace, and mortification arising out of said assault, and including also pain and suffering, all expenses incurred, such as doctor bills, hospital bills, diminished capacity for work and loss of time from work, and all of the damages which are the direct proximate result of such wrongful assault. To the actual damages so found, you have the right to add such exemplary or punitive damages as you may deem just and reasonable. 
if you find that the plaintiff did use abusive and provocative language toward the defendant, then you have the right to consider that in mitigation of exemplary damages that such abusive language by the plaintiff does not permit you to reduce the damages actually sustained by the plaintiff. 